Welcome back to uh, TikTok's video. Now, uh, we're starting this one on the floor because in this video, I'm going to show you my self-hosting setup that I have. Now, it's nothing amazing. It's nothing rack-mounted or anything like this. This is it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the hardware that I'm using, kind of its purpose, and then we'll jump back to my office and I'll give you a high-level view on how everything's working, jump into the key services that I have, and then we'll go from there. Right, to start off, we have my Raspberry Pi here. Now, I started my self-hosting journey with my Raspberry Pi, and this was pretty much all I used. I just had a Raspberry Pi. Now, this is a Raspberry Pi 4, and you can see, obviously, it's got a case. So this is a M2 Argon 1 case. So the M2, obviously, it has an M2 drive in it, which is a solid state, and it's, I think it's about 500 gig. So the purpose of that is you get rid of that SD card, right? Especially if you're wanting to use a Raspberry Pi for long term, what that allows is then you're not, you know, burning out the SD card with all the read writes. It, you know, it just lasts ages. So this is running some key services like my uh, Pi Hole, which is my DNS. Uh, VPN and stuff like that. Again, I'll go into specifics later. It's sitting on top of my Synology NAS. Now, this is quite a new addition to my home lab. Uh, this is the DS224 Plus, as you can see down here. And this has uh, two, it's a two drive bay NAS. So it's got two four terabyte, uh, is it Iron Wolf or something drives? They're, they're made for a NAS, anyways. But the type that I have running, the RAID type that I have running, is the is it the SHA or SHR? I can't quite remember which one it is. Uh, but that means that you know, even though there's eight terabytes total storage here, that uh, I'm actually just using four terabytes because the other drive is for redundancy. So if this drive fails or this drive fails, you know, I don't lose all my data. And being a NAS for the storage for my network, you know, I don't want to use Striped. You know, I'm losing half my storage, but it's for redundancy and that's more important. And then we've got my Elite Desk. So my Elite Desk is also, in terms of how long I've been self-hosting for, relatively new. This runs my Proxmox environment, which also runs my key VMs, uh, and I'll cover those in a second as well. I've got a dedicated video on this. I've got a video on my Na uh, on my um, NAS as well, so if you're keen, links will be in the description. So with my Elite Desk, uh, I put in a NVMe drive, uh, upgraded the storage, and it has 64 gig of RAM. It has a it has a pretty decent CPU. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I have again a dedicated video on it. It's an i7 something. And then on top, you can see I just have a switch, and I have my TP-Link Deco, which acts as my router. And then there's other Deco scattered around the house for you know uh, getting the wireless all throughout the house. And that's my simple setup. There's <laughs> it's nothing crazy, uh, but it does the job. I believe this is the pure fun in self-hosting, you know. I, I don't have a mini data center in my house. I'm just grabbing bits and pieces and making them work. You know, this was second hand. This wasn't brand new. Um, the only thing that costs the most here is probably my NAS, and I wanted to spend that amount of money on it because I needed reliable storage and something that just worked. But that is, <laughs> those are my services. Uh, so let's go back to my office and I'll give you a high level view on how everything works. We'll go over all the services that I'm running and yeah, that'll be it. So back in the office now. So I wanted to show you a diagram really quickly of my setup, which might just help cement just what I'm talking about and how I've got everything set up. So like I was showing you before, we've got some key things here. Oh, and if you're curious on what tool this is, this is Excalidraw, and I have made a video on this, and I've got documentation for it. Pretty much anything I'm covering, and if I've made a video on it, I'll have it in the description. So if you see anything that I cover that you're interested in, just have a look in the description, and it will be there. So you can see here that this is my Elite Desk, right, which is running Proxmox, and my two main Proxmox VMs is my Electron Cloud and my Electron Sandbox. So Electron Cloud is what runs my docs.techdocs, it runs my blog and any other critical everyday things like even Draw. Um, so Excali Draw, which I'm on now, is all running on Electron Cloud. Electron Sandbox are things where I cover a lot in my videos. I'll do some testing. You know, if I break it, it doesn't really matter because it's a sandbox. I don't want to test on Electron Cloud because if I break that, then a lot of other services get affected. Electron Sandbox could go down now and it wouldn't really bother me. And the great thing that I have as well is with my Synology NAS, I actually have a network share set up and all of my devices are connected to this network share. But my Elite Desk, which is the Proxmox, backs up all my VMs, my key VMs, like my Electron Cloud and the Sandbox to my Synology NAS every Sunday, I believe, so that even if I lost 
my Proxmox or any of the VMs, I have the entire VM backed up. I used to do like duplicate backups and stuff like that, but man, when you can just back up the whole VM, <laughs> why not? And every device as well also has a network share, which is just an easy way. It's just an NFS share, and it's an easy way for me to share files and stuff like that throughout my network. So, you know, if I want to send something from Electron Cloud to my Raspberry Pi, which is the green one up here, I can just drop it into the Raspberry Pi a network share folder that I have and then you know I can go into the Pi and grab that file or whatever it is. It's great. It's a it's it's just a great way to pass information over and data and whatnot. You can see I also have my um our Zim server, which is my Zimmer board, and that's also connected to that network share. My Raspberry Pi is essentially the central piece for all my networking configuration here. So I've got my Raspberry Pi, which is uh, running the Pi hole, and my Pi hole is set up for the DNS across all of my network. So the draw.tickdocs.nz, you can see up here, it's using the DNS name from the Raspberry Pi. So a lot of my services, I'm using HTTPS, you know, I've got certificates and all of that good stuff, but it's just local. You can't actually access a lot of these services over the internet unless I've specifically said so. I can't quite remember if draw is available online or not. It might be, I might've allowed it to be online, but you know, that's just how I've got it set up. And I've got a video on how I've configured all of this. So I'm not gonna go into crazy detail, uh, and also, this is wrong, it's green saying it's part of the Raspberry Pi, but Nginx Proxy Manager is actually running on Electron Cloud, and all of my traffic that's interacting with any of my services will go via the Nginx Proxy Manager. So that means that if anything's coming in and wanting to interact with a service, it will go via the domain name, hit the Nginx Proxy Manager, and then the Proxy Manager will send it to the right service on my network. And this also even works for, as we come up to the Cloudflare Zero Trust, when I expose services online and make it available, it's still interacting and hitting my Nginx proxy manager. Everything goes via my proxy manager, even if it's a service exposed to the internet. And the way I expose it is again using Cloudflare Zero Trust, because the great thing there, when I expose my services even out to the internet, it's all via the Zero Trust, which means I don't expose my IP address, you get the DDoS protection and a lot of all of, all of those other features, and it's all free. Why not, right? And it means I'm not opening up any additional ports on my router or anything like that. It's just enough for Nginx Proxy Manager. Cloudflare Zero Trust doesn't need any additional ports. It's, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's great. There's, and again, I've got a video on that. And the last thing here is just kind of showcasing how I access my services when I'm away from home. So this little stick man is me, and then I've got a WireGuard client on my phone or on any of my devices. And then, you know, of course, this is going via the internet and it hits my Pi VPN that's running on my Raspberry Pi, and then I can access all my services that way. So I think this pretty much sums up from a high level view my environment. So now let's start with how I just use everything from my day to day. So as we come into all of my main services that I am running in my home lab, so this is homepage, again, I have a video on this, and this is my single pane of glass view for pretty much everything that's running in my self-hosting setup. This is really beneficial for me because especially when you're running a lot of services, when I've got this sort of view, it will be immediately clear to me when a service is down. Oh, either if a service is completely down, I'll get like an API error and it'll be red and I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with that specific service. Or for example, like if Prometheus ever stops scraping certain uh, clients or targets, it will say here, targets down, that would be like one or two or whatever. But as you can see, there's pretty much a lot of main monitoring services that I have here. And then in the applications tab is pretty much all those applications you've seen in the monitoring plus some, uh, not everything supports that monitoring uh, view in homepage. So all my other services are here. So it's just an easy way for me to go, you know, even though I'm using domain names and I can just go type in, you know, draw.tickdocs.nz to access a lot of these things, Sometimes it's easier to also just see it from this view and I can just click on it and it will take me there. So a good place to start is for my Proxmox environment. So let's head over there. So this is my Proxmox. You can see at the top here, I don't know if you can see how clear this is coming through, uh, that I'm accessing it over 192, but I also have a fully uh, DNS name for that as well. I just haven't switched that in homepage. But again, this domain name, this can't be accessed over the internet. This is just internal and it just makes things a lot cleaner. So you can see here in my Proxmox, I've got some VMs set up. So there's the Electron Cloud that I was talking about before, and this runs everything. This runs, you know, all my key services. We've got Wazar, I've made a video on that. I've got a dedicated VM for that, and that is like my security tool. It's, it has agents on all my devices, 
and it detects any you know vulnerabilities or anything like that and then i've got my sandbox environment which is just a vm setup for just you know playing around testing videos on and stuff like that right so coming back to the dashboard we've got my pi hole so pi hole is pretty much the main like a very critical service uh in my home lab log in here make this a bit bigger for you so you can see here it's doing all the ad blocking all the cool stuff that you know pi hole does besides the ad blocking the main thing i'm using it for is the local dns like the dns name so you can see here that I have all these de domain names set up, the, the draw.techdocs, uh, hours and home, whatever. And most of these are pointing to uh, this IP address here that ends in 113. And that is my proxy manager. So, you know, I'm setting up domain names and I've set up a more in-depth video, again, uh, it's in the description on how I've set all this up and why I've set all of this up. Uh, but it just means that I don't need to use all those IP addresses. I've got a nice clean, you know, set of names that I use to access my tools and my services and stuff like that. So all of these names, let's, for example, let's look at the pie hole one, right? So we've got pie hole set up and then that's pointing to this address. Coming back to the home page, if I click on Nginx proxy manager, that's very bright. Um, if we click on proxy host, you can see now I have all of these set up as well. So pie hole is there. That's the actual address for Pi Hole. And you can see everything has a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. So everything, you know, has SSL and all of that good stuff. So that is, is essentially this setup here, right? So that you've got the, the Raspberry Pi DNS to the proxy manager, and that is that setup. And that's how everything, you know, you hit the domain name, it hits the proxy manager, and then you get the service. Right, so I've logged into my Synology NAS. Now, again, there's so much to cover, and I've already kind of made videos on this. But the main thing here, is my share right so i have this thing called the network share and you can see i have a name folder for pretty much my key servers and this is just how i share the files between all the services so like in electron cloud when i was moving my web server i actually m migrated it from my main server so you can see the mk docs tech docs docs this is my mk docs for my docs.techdocs.nz uh, i moved this into the nas and then on my Raspberry Pi, I grabbed it, and then my Raspberry Pi was running that website, and you wouldn't even notice it went down because I switched it in Cloudflare. And then I could move my server and everything like I did, and then I just switched it back. And I was able to move all of those files really easily just, you know, using the NAS and sharing those via the NFS shares. And you see I have a bunch of other uh, shares and stuff like that. You know, I have my Proxmox, which is the, the VM backup. I also have my Time Machine, so my Mac also backs up to the NAS all of that good stuff. And then my NAS backs up to a cloud environment that I have set up uh, for long-term storage. But what I would really like is to grab another Synology NAS, have that at like a friend or family's house, and then back up to a completely remote site because and leave as much stuff out of the cloud as I can. It's the whole point of getting my NAS. I don't want all of my stuff in the cloud. Now, I've pretty much covered my main services. I don't really want to go into all the other ones. You're looking at these, and if you're familiar with my videos, you know I've covered a lot of these services. But I'll cover two more, and that'll be Grafana and also uh, Portainer. So Grafana, if I come here, and I've logged in. So this is my Grafana dashboard, and this is where I get a high-level view of everything that's all the main servers that I have and how they're going. So it's just a good way to just, you know, see their CPU and all of that. So that's my Electron Cloud. Check out my Alzheimer server's going. That also looks fine. Uh, how's my TikTok server going? Uh, and that's good as well. There's a massive gap here because that's when I was moving it. Uh, so it was not sending any other data across, but you can see that's coming back through now. Again, I have a video on this, exactly how to make this dashboard in particular. So if you're seeing this and going, holy shit, I want that. Uh, I have a video for it. And last but not least, but is a very critical part of my environment is Portainer. And anything that is at least accessible via the internet, even if it's not fully exposed, I'm using the Cloudflare uh, Zero Trust application policies, which is what you can see here. I've tried to access my Portainer. It's now asking me to authenticate. And I have uh, Authentic, which is the identity provider uh, for pretty much as much as my services um, connected. So if I click here, it's going to take me to my Authentic, which I'm self-hosting. And then I can put in my username and what's really cool is i have a yubi key which all i have to do is touch it with my finger bam, put in my pin and hit enter and touch the key again and that's my mfa you're not logging into any of my services unless you have that physical key <laughs> so yeah they're, they're fantastic and it's just a good way to add that extra layer of security and you can see my portain is down <laughs> let me quickly get that spot up right i'll give that a refresh should be back up now there we go so, and you can see the login with OWF, I've already authenticated, so that will just log me in straight away. 
So Protein is fantastic. It's pretty much the central hub for any docker management that I have in my environments. And you can see that I have my tech docs, which is my uh, Raspberry Pi, my Electron Cloud, and my Sandbox. So this is where I come in if I need to deploy VMs, if I need to just check how they're going, start them up, shut them down, uh, see their logs. Uh, I can also see, you know, what's out of date via the image. I can manage all of my containers from here. And if you're keen on checking out Portana, I will have a link in the description uh, so you can have, um, so you can get started as well with Portana and also grab the business edition, which will give you three nodes for free. Uh, link it is in the description for that. And that is my home environment. Those are the service I use. Uh, well, the key services, I'm running a bunch of other services, but I pretty much made videos on all the services that I am running today. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything like that, jump over to the Discord. Like, I can help you in the YouTube comments if you've got any questions or if you're just wondering how something works. But if you're actually wanting to have a good conversation, jump over to the Discord. I'll help you out. Also, I have my membership program and a big thank you to the members that I currently have in my YouTube channel. Now, it's one way to support the channel, but also I will give you one-on-one -on -one support with me if you need it. So if you're having trouble with anything self-hosting related, uh, if you're a member, you'll get one-on-one -on -one support with me. You know, we'll jump onto a call or whatever you need and I'll help you with any sort of issues you're having. But that's it for the video. Thank you so much for all the support lately. It's been fantastic. We've just gone past 10,000 subscribers. So yeah, it's great. I'll see you in the next video though. Thank you so much for all the support uh, and have a good one. Bye-bye.